man, she'll be, you know, me right now be like, Karen, stop all this emotion. <laughs> you being too dramatic. <laughs> so, gosh, I said I wasn't going to even, I was trying to think about everything but this. <laughs> When I first met Miss Emily, because that's how I got a part of the, I became part of the school, was I met her while I was in transition between working at the bank and um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. 15 years ago, you're trying to figure out life. And so I decided to look, because I had a passion for children, so I started looking into programs around around town and one of the programs was like a child development associate and that's where I met Miss Emily. The thing I loved about Miss Emily was at the time my daughter was almost two and um, I told her I said why well, I won't have a babysitter um, for the interview and she said oh just bring your daughter and I was like okay and so I walked in with my daughter and I sat at the table <coughs> and um, I put my daughter beside me at the table and all the teachers were interviewing me and Miss Emily was just sitting back and um, after it was over with, everybody just kind of smiled at me. And so Emily called me an hour later and was like, you have the job. And she said, one of the feedback she gave me was, as the teachers were observing, they were observing my relationship with my daughter. And they saw that we had a great relationship and how I was also catering to her as well as the interview. And so that sparked, wow, you know, why they said, oh, I'll be a good fit for uh, the school at the time. So. Well, I'm weird, so I don't go by my first name. I go by part of my middle name, which is Lori, L-O-R-R-I-E, Watson. So if anybody calls me by my first name, I think I'm in trouble or at the doctor's office. Previously at the Child Development Center from 2012, um, when I hi was hired on as the assistant director to Miss Emily, I was assistant director, which lasted almost a year. And then the pre-K-4 position came open and Miss Emily offered me that, which is my first love. So I jumped on that and then I helped her transition somebody else into the assistant director position. And then um, I became the four-year-old teacher and fell in love and never wanted to go anywhere. And um, this place has been a home to me and to everybody that's been here. Miss Emily had this expectation, you know, with all, you know, a lot of people have expectations, but she let her expectations be known. Every week she communicated with the staff. We had weekly staff and planning meetings. Here are my expectations and this is how you need to follow through. If you don't know how to follow through, I will train you on how to follow through. Her ability to be able to pour out and just pull out all the things that you, she see in you, you know. Sometimes, um, you know, she would encourage me sometimes to say, you know, I want you to go do this, I want you to go do that, or go become a class observer, because I see that in, in you to be a class observer. And I said, well, I, I don't know if I could be able to see it. She's like, you know, you have it. And so, and that was one of the things you just said. She would say, put your big girl panties on. You know you can do it. And so then that was literally her picture frame on the desk was you can do it. And so her leadership style was, 
amazing. She was open to just not only the teachers or the staff at the school, but she opened herself to the community. I've always looked up to Emily because Emily was the type of person that could do anything and everything all at the same time. She ran graduation for ULM, simultaneously running the ULM Child Development Center, simultaneously teaching classes, CPR classes, all of this going on, making everything look easy and seamless. And we really didn't realize the extent of everything that she was doing until she was no longer able to do that. I had to work early that morning and so um, she called me to the office and told me her diagnosis. But with, with all things, you know, she was still smiling. I mean, it, it was no different. While I was sitting there thinking like, oh my gosh, like, do I hug her? Do I um, hold her hand? What do I do in this moment? And she looked at me in the eyes and she said, oh, I'm gonna be all right. I'm all right. And so she said, I just have to go through this, but I'm, I'm going to be fine. And so um, that's how she shared the news with me. And then in our staff meetings, it was just kind of more of less like um, for the next six weeks, I have to go and um, travel to Houston to do this treatment and I'll just keep y'all updated. But, you know, um, but that's just kind of how I found out personally. Because she was who she was, because she was that kind of person she had pulled in a team of experts behind her. She had pulled me in first as assistant director when she found out that she had a diagnosis. Ms. Stacy and I received a phone call that when she was here locally at St. Francis, that they were getting ready to um, like um, transport her to Jackson. And so we wanted to just kind of, you know, uh, wish her well, because that was another thing she would tell us all the time. We wish you well, or I wish you well. And so we didn't know what to expect when we walked in. And so we were told, hey, you know, you need to um, cover up. You need to put on this suit. You, you need to suit up before you enter into the room. And we were just like, okay. And so we walked in and there's Ms. Emily sitting up in the bed. <laughs> but to know her, you, you had to know she was a, a fighter, she was resilient. Um, and Miss Stacy and I just kind of looked at each other and we were just like, okay. You know, we were, we were expecting something far worse than what we saw. And she looked us in the eyes and she said, um, after a long conversation, we were talking about different things. And um, she looked us in the eyes and she said, um, you know, um, she said, girls, I taught you all what you need to know, and um, I just need for you to go do it. And she looked at us and said, I love you. And that was like the last time, you know, we saw her, so, yeah. Just give me a minute. I'm trying to go. It was just the, the image. That's all. It just. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay. <laughs> But you know, the thing about her was, Miss Emily didn't tell you a whole lot that she loved you. So when she said it, he kind of knew. So, yeah. We were trained by Emily to be educators, to be leaders, and to be a team. And when I got the word from Karen that there was an opening for a pre-K-4 teacher again, I said, I'm in, I'm in. I, I, will I drive over an hour 
every morning and I drive home an hour every evening so that I can be here because this school is not a daycare. It's not just somewhere you drop your kid off and hope for the best and pick them up later. It is a lab school. It's a developmental center. It's, it's all of those things. And it's just, it's just kind of mind boggling to think. There are so many things that we're able to do here because we have the support of ULM. We have the support of the most amazing parents and the most amazing children and the things that we can do with and for them, we're able to touch the lives of dental hygiene students, speech and language pathology students, nursing students. Um, every day we have student workers coming in and learning to work here as their first possibly job out of you know high school. And they're coming in here and working here at college and learning how to parent, basically, how to raise children. We use positive guidance and we don't use punitive measures and things like that so that the children learn to be individuals and they learn to think for themselves. And it's just really amazing when you stop and think about it. Hey, you guys. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm filming something. A couple years ago, uh, the second biggest tragedy happened to yeah. the school. Yeah. Obviously, the first was mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, the second was the fire. Yeah. When I heard about the fire, I was just devastated because I, I, I immediately thought, my first thought was, oh, my classroom. I wasn't even teaching in there anymore, but that was my first thought was, oh, my classroom. Then I thought, oh, the whole school, it's gone. And it was devastating. And immediately my first reaction was to pick up my phone, call Karen Ford and say, Karen, are you okay? What can I do? Do you need to talk? Is everything okay? And I talked to Karen and she just, you know, she just kind of, we had been friends for a long time at, at work and outside of work. And she just kind of, you know, told me how she was feeling. And she said it's just a real time of, of uncertainty because, you know, they, they were just in a, a time where they didn't know if they were going to, you know, come back or not come back or what they were going to come back with. And she said right now we're just really thankful that the fire happened at night and that everybody was safe. Yeah, when uh, the former director, she called me, um, I remember that night she was saying, you know, in a panic, I need you to get to the school, I need you to get to the school. And I said, okay, what's going on? She said, I received the phone call, that there's a fire, and I said, fire? And so I kind of looked at the time, grabbed my purse, ran out. Um, but from a distance, you could see, you know, the smoke. Our building is up in smoke, what are we going to do? As a teacher and had been under Miss Emily, that, I mean, we couldn't, I mean, her death was um, one of the things that kind of rocked us, but she prepared us for anything and all obstacles. So I knew this was just like a bump in the road. Little did I know that I'd be back here three years after the fire teaching again. And the first time I walked in here and she said, oh, we're in the old sub. And I thought, that's impossible. Well, Karen called me and she said, I have been appointed the new director. And I said, it's about time. That was my first thought, it's about time. I knew once I took the position, I had some shoes to fill, especially walking in the footsteps of Ms. Emily. Um, she is the one that set the foundation for this program. If it wasn't for her, um, we wouldn't be the school that everyone in the community love and know. Um, you know, so, but I really wanted to honor her uh, legacy and just 
recalling back to that last day I saw her when she said, I taught you everything you need to go know, so just go do it. And that's where I'm at now. I'm honored um, to be able to be walking in, or being a predecessor for her. You know, it's, it's, um, it can be challenging, but it's exciting at the same time, and, and I'm truly honored. With the fire occurring, you know, some people may look at it and say it was traumatic. You know, and it was in certain aspects, but I also look at it like this was an idea for us to be able to look into our program um, as a whole and say, where are some places that we can grow, that we can also, um, you know, uh, rebuild with a purpose and making sure that we um, look to the university family and also the community family and try to meet those needs. But she just retains everything she learns and everything she hears, and it's amazing to me because I have ADHD and it just kind of goes bing, 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 bing. But she retains everything and she has a head for numbers and she can think back to the reason of why we do this this way and she can explain it to people just instantaneously. And she does it in such a kind, thoughtful way that just brings out the most honest, gentle, but strongly supportive manner in people. We have been trying to make sure we have everything we need ready so that when the fire, you know, when we've got that all taken care of and we're ready to move to a new building that we can have everything in place and Karen's like, you know, does anybody know anybody that can do this? And we're like, yeah, we can do, we can call so-and-so. We can call such and such. So it, she can lead a team because she was trained to lead so well by an expert, but also because she has those innate skills and I will take her back and I will stand behind her. And so will everybody in this building, kids included, we will take Karen's back and we will stand behind her and we're going to make this happen because she is worth it and we're worth it. And these kids, they will blow your mind. I guarantee you, come visit. Come be our guest. We'll show you. You will not believe what these children are able to do.